Hello folks, Kevin here again. I'm out again hiking and camping once more in Finnish nature. Today I'm a little bit farther away from home, about an hour and a half drive inland. And I'm at the Liesjärvi National Park. It's an area with quite spectacular woodland paths and also lakes each side of the path. I am currently walking down a causeway between two lakes which is wooded so I have water on e either side of me and it's uh, incredibly beautiful. just met a family fishing off a bridge. Uh, it was grandparents and grandchildren. In Finland it's very common for kids to be taught from a very young age to fish with a, a pole and a line. So there's no reel, it's just a, the line is tied to the end of the pole which is usually telescopic and it's about three, four, maybe even six meters long. Uh, the nice thing about fishing with a pole is you don't need a license for it and so you can pretty much uh, carry it wherever you, you want and then unfold the pole so it's at full length stick a couple of maggots or a worm on the end of the hook with a float and you're good to go So our destination for this afternoon is Kortiniemi, 3.3 kilometers, and uh, a little rest there, and then we'll come back this direction and uh, head to the designated ten place, which is at Savilahti. So Finnish lesson of the day: Savi is clay, and Lahti is a lake. So Savilahti is clay lake, and. Korte Niemi. Niemi is a headland or a peninsula and a korte is a type of plant. It's like um, horse tails. This is an example of a horsetail plant. Uh, this is a very prehistoric plant that still exists today in damp places. There's an expression in Finnish goes something like Suomalaiset ovat metsän kansa This means Finns are forest people And so in the past Finns hacked their livelihood from the forest and built farms and ploughed ground This model farm farmstead in Kortiniemi is uh, modelled on a f existing farm that's been here since 1910 and uh, it's possible to actually live and work here as a volunteer using the methods that were used at the start of the 20th century. So here's the original farmhouse, it's surrounded by fruit trees and fruit bushes. Some way away is the well with the typical roof on and then this stick and pulley arrangement to get access to the water. Of course all these wells are dug by hand. Then you have the paddock in front of the farmhouse with outbuildings. This is an example of a typical traditional Finnish fence. Looks a bit flimsy but it does the job and you'll notice that they've used twigs and bark like string to tie the poles together. There are no nails used because well nails and iron is expensive so you used basically what was available. Here's another example of using materials available to you. This uh, low building was probably, oh, it could be for storing wood, not quite sure. The point is is that ceramic tiles for your roof are expensive and heavy 
Instead of what you can do is cut very very thin slices of wood and then use them and overlap them and uh, they will do the job. Obviously it doesn't last as long as a ceramic tile or a slate but they're easy to be replaced and don't cost anything except time and labour. There's an information sign here that says that this place was completely cleared of trees and it's taken about 200 years for them to come back to what it looks like now. When the Finns cleared the land here, they, of course they also used slash and burn techniques to try and clear back the trees. And uh, yeah, such activity leaves its mark on the landscape for quite a long time. Finish, this is called a Koppokoreana. It's basically a dung beetle. Not very fast and moving characters, but quite cute nonetheless. Yeah, I love the blue-black colour of these scarab beetles. Well, the rain came down finally and it's coming down fairly heavy, hopefully not for the night. So this is the first time I've ever hiked in the rain and uh, well, so far so good. It's uh, cooler now at least than it was, which is nice. I still have a few kilometres to go to get to the camping area where I can put up the hammock. But um, yeah, so far so good. Let's just hope that this is just a shower and uh, it's not going to be torrential rain all night. Hmm. That, my friends, is a toad. You can usually tell them because they don't really hop like frogs, they run. So he's obviously enjoying himself in the, uh, in the suddenly damp conditions. So absolutely beautiful. I let him go so he doesn't get too stressed. Mammy. There you go, buddy. Well, good morning. Yeah, I had a very nice sleep last night. Plenty warm. Slept like a log. Yeah, it rained quite heavily all through the night and all this morning. In fact, the rain was so heavy that I decided just to chill out and take it easy for most of the morning, just snoozing in the hammock, which was very pleasant. I have the DD Superlight, Superlight XL tarp from DD Hammocks and it covers the hammock very nicely and kept the rain out no problem. Now that's the view from the inside. As you can see I have plenty of space underneath this tarp. It's huge. It's going to be interesting to see how heavy it is when it's when I'm trying to pack it away because it's going to be it's quite wet. Thank you to Savi Lakti for ho hosting me last night here in Lies, Lies Jarvik National Park. I'll definitely come here again. Hopefully the other weather will be drier next time. Still, good experience. Okay, so I just stopped at a map of the National Park and I can show you roughly where I went yesterday. So the original path was supposed to start here and run along this yellow path all the way to Kortiniemi. So then I followed this blue path around this way, had a break here, and then the rain started around here somewhere. And then I went back onto the path, all the way back, and then I turned right to a Savilakti. Savilakti. And I camped overnight there. So now I'm basically come back off this path and I'm back here. And I have about a kilometer left to go back to the car. There's a bit of a learning curve last night, bringing up the longer tarp in the rain. It's the first time I've had to do it. And uh, yeah, I learned that, for example, you need to have your tarp high enough so that when you walk underneath it with a wet plastic coat on, you don't stick to the underside of the tarp. Uh, should be obvious, but not something I never ever really thought about until it became a bit of an issue. The second thing is how heavy the tarp is once it's wet and covered in pine needles when you're packing it away it was practically impossible to get it back to its original size uh, right now I'm carrying it in a plastic bag outside my rucksack even though when the rain came down and uh, everything was getting wet and even with my waterproofs on I was wet underneath and very sweaty uh, it's one thing I noticed I was actually happy I was like really enjoying the experience. Now, admittedly, if I was doing this for seven days on the trot and was wet every day and didn't have spare dry clothes, 
I might be a little bit less chirpy about it. Oh, well, made it back to the car okay. Started to rain quite heavily again. But uh, yeah, all in all, great adventure. I really enjoyed it. Hiked more than I've hiked in a long time actually. Altogether it was something like 14, 14 kilometers. So I'm quite happy with that. Apologies for not doing more this morning. It's just the, the weather wasn't exactly conducive to filming in the rain. I hope you enjoy the video. Yeah, I guess I'll see you on the next trail. So all the best from Liestiari National Park. This is Kevin signing off. My much.